So, so yeah, Doug, um, looks like we're live here. Okay. So, uh, I'm trying to look. Hello, on everybody. Um, I'm here um, in my basement. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you with my friend Doug, who's not in my basement. No, and, uh, thankfully, because that would be really weird. Yeah, well, we wouldn't. We shouldn't be, you know, one of the media if we're on our. <laughs> Quite true. <laughs> well, we're just um, having a few beers here. Um, this is something we're going to try maybe on the weekends here. Um, meet up and see what we're having. We kind of understand um, as dads and men who work every day and all that that you know at the end of the week is when you want to need you know need a libation or something to drink. So we're just going to come here and show you what we're drinking and have a good time. So um. I'm drinking, actually, Doug, you start because uh, introduce yourself. Tell me who you are. Where are you at? Uh, I'm Doug Ziegler. I am from upstate New York, not in Greg's basement. Uh, I'm actually sitting in my living room, and I'm hopeful that my kids will be quiet enough for this whole thing so that, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like a jungle gym going on. But tonight I am starting, well, not starting because it's so heavy. I'm going to probably stick with one, but I'm drinking uh, Comez Russian Imperial Stout. This is a beer from Poland making a Russian Imperial Stout. So that's kind of interesting. A nice <laughs> little 12% ABV. So that thing is going to be plenty for me to have for one go. But, uh, you know, I when I had opened it earlier, it actually started foaming out. And uh, so I had to immediately kind of put it in a glass. So I put it in my uh, trusty beer mug. This beer mug is actually believe it or not, a Tiffany beer mug that was given to me as a wedding present. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like afraid to use it half the time, but. Okay. Okay. Well, I have um, an empty glass. Got to take care of that one. Yeah. I have New Glarus chocolate stout. Mm -hmm. um, New Glarus is a local Wisconsin wonderful brewery. Um, if you don't know New Glarus in the craft beer world, first of all, I'm sorry. But second of all, you got to get out more because <laughs> the Glarus is one of the best. Uh, they're one of the best, but they're also well known um, as far as countrywide. Um, they only distribute to Wisconsin, but um, that doesn't that doesn't stop the lure of their beer from going everywhere. Um, I don't know. I'm proud of this um, home state brew, Mike. Let's see what let's see what we got here. Man, mine smells nice and smoky. Whoa. Um, the chocolate, mm, 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 mm. uh, mild chocolate. I'm not, it's a it, first of all, the chocolate is assertive, but it's more, um, it's not dark chocolate. What's that? Uh, what's not dark chocolate? Not dark chocolate, but not milk chocolate either, right? Milk chocolate. Oh, it is it's okay, really milk chocolate. Yeah, I, it's not bitter, it's more sweet. Yeah, um, very nice though. Um, winter warmer, I'm not sure what the ABV is, it's probably light. Um, this is more, I don't want to say, I just don't want to be like, oh, it's just a dessert beer, but it's, yeah. it'd be really nice with some of that Halloween candy. Yeah. I think I can arrange to send you some of them from uh, Southern Tier, which is, their freaking dessert beers are ridiculous. But Oh, yeah. Creme brulee and, oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> They did just come. They did just uh, the past years come out with a series of beers that they make that are fashioned after cocktails. Like they have oh. one. That, they have one that tastes that's they call Manhattan, which is made with cherries and things like that. Uh, so that one, you know, cherries is always a little touchy because you know, as you talk about in the group, a lot of guys don't. Oh, for that. That gonna be plenty for me. Hello. Hey. <laughs> that was you. <laughs> Maybe you need more beer. <laughs> right no i was trying to see uh in the facebook uh on the facebook page there trying to get to our comments there see if anybody's talking and yeah. actually uh did something so yeah um uh, southern tier yeah they um we are definitely we get a lot of their beer here um and i don't know man their stuff is kind of too sweet for me not too sweet but um it's one of those where i just have to have a little bit on the side you know yeah, I mean, one of those is is plenty because of how sweet it is. It's like having like a really sweet regular dessert, like just, you know, a little will do you. But this beer here, it's really classic Russian Imperial. I mean, it's roasty and malty and it's got all the, the goodness to it. So we got, um, do we have a heavy alcohol either smell or taste? 
the taste is definitely more boozy. The smell is not. The smell is much more the roasty smell. So, um, you know, this one, I just found that, you know, we don't have like Costco or Trader Joe's here where I am. We have Wegmans, which is pretty awesome. But that beer I found on a shelf in there and I'd never seen it. And it was four bucks and it was a, it was a pint. <laughs> so it's like, you can't get a pint of any craft beer for four bucks. So, no. and and the only other thing I would say is either, um, you know, especially with IPAs, which I know you're not down with. <laughs> uh, Check those labels though. Check those labels because if the beer is a little bit too um, long in the tooth, you'll probably taste that. But with a Russian Imperial, you're good with, you know, uh, you know, people age Russian Imperials all the time. So yeah, um, you're good with it. You know, being, so I wouldn't even say that for that one, but um, no, it sounds pretty good. And for $4, I guess, you know, sometimes, you know, again, beers get long in the tooth and they just want to get rid of them in a, a Russian Imperial is a good one to like have there when I'm trying to get rid of clearance. Yeah. You're not going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And also, they're also pretty good for cellaring if you're into that. Like I cellar, I generally will sell like heavier beers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I will not cellar anything with fruit because I've had a couple of those and that just goes not well because the fruit just, it either makes it so sweet that it's, undrinkable or it makes it almost vinegary which is not great either <laughs> right 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 and it also yeah yeah it, and it depends what kind of fruit we're talking about or what fruit kind of fruit beer because yeah. you're talking like a lambic those are aged so um you know um obviously they're aged to make the beer so obviously aging them longer <laughs> may not hurt them but if you're making if you know you're talking about like a <laughs> raspberry ale or something yeah <laughs> yeah it's not gonna go well yeah. uh, so Doug, you're you're um so what i um what i really wanted to bring as far as what i talked to you about doing this um on a weekly basis i wanted to bring out a different aspect um obviously we're both beer guys but um explain to everybody you are um you what, what else do you like besides beer what's your what's your thing i won't give it up just... yeah it's okay <laughs> i don't mind talking about it um i also have uh, some things that I write and like my, some of my online, like social media stuff is, uh, under a name, scotch fully yours. Cause I really like scotch quite a bit. Um, not as much on the bourbon end. I can drink bourbon, but I am much more partial to, uh, scotch. There's a lot more personality to scotches and there's a lot more variance to it to me. Um, I'm also a big fan of cocktails, uh, not a wine drinker. Uh, wine is the only thing I drink that gives me hangover headaches. Everything else mm. doesn't. I'm really lucky in that I, you know, if I drink and even if I happen to tie one a little bit too, too well, tie one on a little bit too well, the next day usually I'm pretty good. But wine just, that thing is like a sledgehammer to me. What about you? Oh, yeah. So, well, first of all, so yeah, scotch, um, <clears throat> I know nothing about it. And I just need to learn more about that. So um, there'll be week there'll be weeks that you come on that you're gonna be bringing scotch, right? Yep. Excellent. And mixed drinks, we can do that too, right? <laughs> yeah, I I am not an expert. I I tend to when I do mixed drinks, they're more for. I make them like rocket fuel, so like they're very okay. heavy alcohol based. I, I thought you were gonna say I make them for my wife, <laughs> so, yeah. which is a good answer. I mean, it's, it's a valid answer. There's no, no question. Yeah. But, like, um... <laughs> no, so yeah, obviously, obviously, I'm a beer guy. I have my daddy Porter stuff that hopefully somebody's watching this maybe. Um, yeah. but uh, other than that, I, I'm, a, I would like, I would jump into tequila. I like cocktails. Um, it's funny. I actually started as a wine guy before I traveled into beer. So I'm not really that against wine, but I'm, kind, I've kind of moved on from that taste, if that makes any sense. Sure. Um. With all the respect to the wine people, don't come at me. Um, <laughs> no, you guys are great, and it's a great thing. And I, you know, wine and beer, especially we we got a. I don't know if you you probably don't touch them, but we have a thing called brewed IPAs, which uses like uh, I believe champagne yeast or some wine yeast. Yeah, that seemed to be the flavor of the uh, season this year. Is uh, I've seen yeah. a lot of those. And I, I they, they end up being like whiny. And mm -hmm. there's also um, I, I also see some. Um, I've also noticed some like sour uh, brewers making like whiny beers and they're kind of connecting with people who like wine. 
and that's cool. It's just not my thing. Yeah. But so, but so I kind of, you know, it's funny. I move. I I use wine to get to beer, but I'm mostly a beer guy. And I love the bourbon beers. I love the Scotch beers. Because I was gonna. I, one thing I want to talk to you about is um this, you know, the bourbon beer, bourbon barrel beers, mm-hmm. and then the Scotch barrel beers. And before we went live today, um, you had a Scotch barrel. What, what was going on there? You sent me oh, a picture. I had a when I was at dinner. Um, I was out to dinner with my family, and I had something called a barrel aged old fashioned. So basically, the it was made with bullet bourbon, uh, which old fashions are made with bourbon traditionally. Um, I think they just named it that to give it a nifty nickname. It wasn't any different than the old fashioned that I've ever had. Mm. It was it was really good. I like old fashions quite a bit. Um, that's a bourbon drink that I really do enjoy. Um, you know, but that was, uh, it looks really nice and pretty. <laughs> it did. It did. It did. Yeah. I, I like to call when beers are nice and pretty. Um, the one guy I learned uh, some beer stuff from, he called it beer theater. So yeah. that's what I call it, you know, like cocktail theater or scotch theater, <laughs> where yes. it's like part of, part of the experience of it is the look. Mm-hmm. Um, is this appealable? You know, is this appealing to me? It's just like food. Just like, you know, when we go out to eat, is this appealing to me? And it needs to, if it's $25 a plate, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I think there's an expression for like chefs where it's like you eat with your eyes first. Yes. And so if it's not something you look at and go, man, that looks really good. Boy, you're really liking that beer. <laughs> yeah, it's a, this is a good one. This is a good one. Um, again, a little bit too sweet for me, but it's, I don't know. It's good. I yeah. can't complain. You can't complain? <laughs> I can't <laughs> go complain. So the next one is, I don't know if you've heard of this brewery, um, Spreckers. I always get their name wrong. They do root beer. No, I've beer, never heard of them. Fruit beer. Um, they have like a label a lot. Pubs. Uh, yeah, Black Bavari, and it's their um, hoppy black lager, kind of like uh, a black IPA ish, yeah. kind of maybe we'll see. Um, I don't know, it's one of their best ones, actually. I'm gonna get to this after I do this one. Uh, first one that I had, we won't talk about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that one did go over well, apparently. No, but it was, it was what I was telling you, man. It was, um, it was a pale ale, and it just there was just no hops in it. So it was just malt. And I know you're not a big hoppy guy, but some of these beers... Oh, are yeah, nice. but if you're drinking a pale ale, you expect some hops in it. Well, sure. And there are beers that you probably like to have a lot of hops in them, but they also have a profile that balances the hops. I think that people who are turned off by IPAs are turned off by a lot of hops. And this yeah. kind of like, let's just throw hops at everything kind of thing. So yeah. I'm with you. I got it. <laughs> Well, I'm curious because that was an Icelandic beer, and I wonder what kind of ah. they used it. <laughs> Sorry, I won't say the brand. But the brand is different, but I'm wondering if their hops are different. No, 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 no. Let's, just... Let's just leave that one. All right. Yeah. I, you know, I probably blame myself because, again, I probably um, see, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here preaching to everybody to watch your beer labels and watch the expiration dates and then i go into a beer store like a kid in a candy shop oh i know grabbing and whatever i see i grab and then i get home and then i'm like all right let's try it let's see what the date is 2016 great good job greg (laughs) because you're going to be a beer expert so you're telling everybody to go out and buy fresh beer because it's good and then what do you do i've done this so many times it's Uh. Anyway, but part of the part of the deal, dog, is that um, is that part of the issue is that I shop with the um the mixed sixes or the individual ones, and yeah. sometimes I'm not speaking for everybody, but sometimes that's where like the scraps of the beer or the old beer gets put in, and then they yeah. put like six of the beer. You know what I mean? So then it's sure. kind of like, yeah, you get to mix and match where you get to pick yours to put in. Yes. Okay. And uh, then, yeah, I think they're older beers sometimes, or they've just been around, you know, as, as opposed to just, you know, a nice fresh six pack, which I, again, I have many beer friends, but I don't see them a lot. And I just, six pack for me is just a lot of beer of one. Yeah. And it's one of those things where like, let's say you're trying something completely new. 
you might not like it. And if you buy a six pack of it, you're stuck with five extra beers you don't want you don't want to drink. Now, fortunately, I know a lot of people, like especially where I work, who are beer hounds as well. I can always pawn that stuff off, which is great. Except then I've spent <laughs> for a really good six pack, you're spending 13, 14 bucks, and then you're basically out 10 bucks because you're, you know, shuffling off the other stuff. <laughs> and you know me, man. You know me from being in the group. Daddy Porter group on Facebook, if you guys are interested. Um yep. whoever is watching this knows Daddy Porter, so you guys probably know the group. But um in the group there, I, I especially when I'm away. I mean, it's his flights. It, it, there has to be, there's no other way for me. You can call me, I don't know, because they got new names for people like me now. What do they call us? People who only drink the new stuff and don't drink the old stuff. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't I know. Want, I want the, I just want to, when I go into a brewery, I want to try all your beers. That's, I don't know why people think that's negative. I want to see everything you're doing. I just, well, yeah. And then if it's not, if I can't, if I'm like rolling, Doug, we got to do this too, by the way, man. We got to come, I'll come to your hometown. We just got to run through the breweries. Uh, um, <laughs> I got some good ones here, believe it or not. What's that? I got some good ones around me. So oh, I, 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 There's great ones everywhere, man. I believe it. Especially the people who are surviving now because it's kind of getting down to a little downturn here. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're actually getting to, in my opinion, the Darwinism point of this where the novelty is kind of wearing off. Yep. I don't want to say now it's wearing off, but like the weaker, the weaker, the weaker weeding themselves out. I'm just, that's just the way it is. So sure. my point is that getting back to my point though, is that when I roll into a brewery, I want to taste your best. And a flight is the only way I can do that. If I sit there with a whole pint, I just can't taste all your best. And I can't afford that. My liver can't afford it. I can't walk anywhere after six pints. It's, <laughs> so That's too so much. <laughs> I need I need your flights. I need it. Mm -hmm. It's the only way I'm gonna come back to your place, because otherwise I'm not gonna know if you're good or not. Yeah. So, so yes, I agree. That's that's why it kind of feeds into when I go to the beer store. It's just about trying to get a variety, and then like you said, if I don't like it, I can back out. If I do like it, I can go for six. Yep. And the other now I don't know if you're like this. This is I will confess I am like this. Is I'll go in and I'll look and I'll see some beer and, I'm, and it usually it's places or beers I've never heard of, and I will look at the label and go, "That is a really cool label. I like that because of your label and you invested time in putting the right label on it. That <laughs> means to me you're probably investing in making sure the beer's good. So I'm gonna roll the dice and grab it. Now that has that's about a fifty fifty shot. <laughs> is that where we're at? What's that? Is that where we're at? Fifty fifty. For me, yeah. Oh, no, 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 it's cool. No, no, I, I don't do this, so I need to. I I need to get evidence for people who do. Yeah, well, there's <laughs> some like, I'll give you for instance, Rogue did this. They did a series of sour beers, which I'm generally not a fan of. I will try them. I will try damn near anything, even IPAs. But they have one that was like made with kombucha, and it had like a sloth on the label. Well, it's freaking sloth. Of course, I'm going to go get it because it's got a cool sloth on the label. I'm going to go drink it. And I will tell you that was surprisingly good. I uh, did not expect that to be good because sours are, they're a tricky thing for me. Um, a lot of people really like them. What uh, is it, the acid or the taste or where are we at with sours? I think, I think with sours, if it's more middle of the road, do you know what I mean? Like not where... Uh, I, would, I don't want something that's going to wreck my palate so bad that I can't drink the next thing without mm -hmm. drinking an entire glass of water. Yeah. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it's the same way with like when you drink like the super hoppy IPAs. Well, mm -hmm. I don't, it's going to take me a glass of water until I can taste something where I'm not tasting hops. So the next thing I have, let's say you have a flight, like you said, and mm -hmm. I have a flight and I get to the IPA thing and it's like, who that was hoppy and then the next thing is a darker beer well i'm not gonna be able to taste the even if it's like a, just a regular lager i'm not gonna get the nuances of that lager at all because my i'm still tasting hops for five minutes after the fact so yes sir yes yeah. sir so it's uh <laughs> if they did it right <laughs> it, it, well usually you'll find i don't usually the places i i have getting flights when they start with something they, they're smart about how they order their flights so that you're not getting, you know, 
there's really heavy stuff right in the beginning or they usually usually it's light to dark is what i get unless it's something that's got like a specialty that they'll throw in the end but mm -hmm. i don't know is it that way there for you most of the time yeah i always love uh it's funny because when i order my flights and the people are with me who know me they always are surprised that i get a pilsner or a light lager or a hobby lager or something on the light end um yeah. Because again, that's part of a brewer's profile is can you do those light beers too? Yeah. I don't necessarily like them. They're not my favorite, but a brewer needs to make those. There's a definite strain of people who need or not need or who want them. And a brewer needs to do them good. Yeah. And I want to taste them. So yeah, I and you're right, there there is a balance with the with the with the flights, obviously, because again, it, you know, again, I'm I'm a brewery I'm a brewery runner. I won't go for four weeks and then I'll go to sixteen breweries in three days. Like that's how I work. I like I like seeing you. Oh, Greg's on it. Greg's on a flight kick. Here we go. And right. You know, so part of that is pictures of all these flights, and then you're right. like, you don't hear anything for three weeks. Like it's like you're, you're like the kid that's like, okay, I get to go out now. Let's go. <laughs> yes, I hide until yeah. it's time to spring. And um, but yeah, no, but so then when you're doing like three days for all these flights, I want to taste. You know, again, I want a broad thing. And you, I mean, again, you sound like a, in my opinion, you sound like a, um, a very um, uh, experienced taster, beer taster. And and you said it, you know, not just drinker, obviously, but a beer taster. And the reason I say that is because you described about how these certain beers just kill your palate and you just really can't move on from the rest of the day. And some yeah. of these long days I have, like what people don't see in the pictures is that like at the end of it, I'm just like, give me a damn porter. And like I just you know I mean drink a whole one or like yeah. my palate is done. There's a certain amount of time where your palate is done, and you just yeah. need to stop tasting and just start drinking and have a good time. Um, and those are usually when you have those big juicy crazy beers. So is that so is that so is that why we don't like IPAs? Look at this, we got this on the first show. Why you don't like IPAs? I thought we were gonna wait till at least the third or something. <laughs> well, like I said, I, I want to just clarify. I will try anything because. Okay. Even if it's an IPA that, you know, I'll be go, oh man, an IPA. And I will, I will prejudge it because it's an IPA and it's mostly just that hoppy taste. And I will describe it to people as like, I don't want to feel like I'm chewing my beer. Like there are some that are so hoppy that it literally feels like you're just, I got a mound of grass in my mouth and I'm just, mm. I don't care for that. But there's plenty like the hazy IPAs, the Northeast IPAs. I like those more because they're citrusy mostly. Like they still get the hops, of course, mm -hmm. but like the citrus flavor is really pronounced, and I can, I can drink those and drink those fairly easily. Uh, but you know, there's I forget who makes so many things. There's one called Palate Wrecker, and it's like just this, yes. kind of, and it's like an IBU that's like 720 IBUs, and I'm like, yeah, but your taste buds only go to like 250, so you're just wasting all that IBU, and then you can't taste anything. Right. Yeah, they say, I thought they said 100, but you're right. Yeah. There's a limit to all this. There's a limit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> the limit is my taste buds. <laughs> and, brewer, and brewers want to go here. <laughs> yeah. Hey. And we're cool with down here generally. <laughs> yeah. But if you know what, if they want to do something and do something weird like that, hey, try weird shit. That's something that I like. I like when they people do weird stuff with their beers and they try some things and you're just like, I would never have thought of that, and that just blows my mind. So you do like IPAs is what I'm hearing. I like Northeast IPAs, again, to a degree. It's not something I can drink a lot of. Okay. If I'm going to drink a lot of something, it's going to be Pilsners, or mm. I can drink Heffies. Uh, mm. But if I'm going to drink something I really enjoy, it'll be Porters and Stouts. So but gonna, that's not great to drink in the summer, so you tend to go with the lighter stuff. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, you, I didn't just hear that. <laughs> yeah, for me, I still drink them. I still drink them, but if I'm like sweaty from mowing the lawn, no, okay, 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 no, then I'll grab something light. There, there, this is where we're in a great part of the conversation. I love this, and unfortunately, we're gonna come back to because this is a, we're gonna first show, we're hitting all of them. Um, there's a beer, just like music, there's a beer for everything, like there's music for everything. So, yes, you're right. After I'm not going to be trying to drink a Russian Imperial Stout after I mowed the lawn. There's just no question, actually. And you're right. Pro it, it may not be a porter, but it could be. But you're right. It was <laughs> Pilsner 
or like you know what I mean. Uh, I would love a hoppy lager. You know I mean light, but I get that I get my hops in there because I love hops. Yep. Um, something like that for sure. No, no, no. And uh, you know, again, I don't know. On rainy days, I want to hear Jimi Hendrix. Um, when I'm working out, I want to hear hip hop. When yeah. I'm angry, I want to hear Metallica. So I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> kind of the same thing. It's also uh, shower beers too, and that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> I, we're gonna do that, but not tonight because no. it's a big one, and I've never. Well, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> Craig, <laughs> we're, gonna have, we're gonna have fun, man. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, um, so yeah, we're gonna um. I got some crazy thing or quote crazy things. I um during my beer travels, I um the thing. Oh, let's talk about this too real quick, and then I don't know. I'll be, I can still go, or we'll wrap this up because we want to keep it about you know what 20, 30 minutes, forty minutes. But yeah, I um, think that's wise. One thing I've been noticing, and um, and this is a, this is something that we're going to continue to bring up and up and up, is that um the craft beer industry, um, I see a lot of innovation as far as um not only the beers, but I see some of these brewers and some of these places um do different things and um the one thing that i've noticed is um uh, a lot of breweries are doing distilleries or they're hooking up with distilleries or they're doing collabs with distilleries or like this whole craft distillery thing is starting to rise as much as craft beer so when i'm on my travels i'm just going to start grabbing craft this distillery things i might end up sending you some instead of me drinking it i'll just send it to you um i, w- I was at dogfish head and um Delaware last year, and they have a distillery. Yeah. So I have I, ha- I have a vodka upstairs that I'm I'm waiting to test. I haven't tasted it at all. Yeah. So maybe next week or one of these weeks. Um. So I'm gonna jump in. My point is that I'm gonna jump in on some of this hard um hard uh, alcohol like with it. you, and um, we're gonna try all this together. Um. I like a good shot here and there, for sure. Especially at the end of the night. Again, when I've had all my. Yeah. Right. Dutch is definitely a sipper. That is not something you drink in excess or you drink a lot of. It's definitely a nice, easy going thing. And you're gonna teach me how to like what glass I put it in because you were you were asking me in one of our pre-production things about um, me telling you about the glass that I use for beer and all that. And I, I kind of want the same thing going on because I know nothing about it. Uh, what like so aren't some people don't some people get angry when you put ice cubes in alcohol? There's a whole thing. When we have a scotch episode, (laughs) I will explain to you the variances of water versus ice versus, you know, straight up. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to drink it. And I was in Scotland Scotland and drank scotch there. And I'm going to tell you what they what they suggest is something that people here wouldn't do. So we'll save that for another time. Okay, And then you're going to you're going to do that while having a nice scotch from Scotland. Absolutely. Ooh. So um, so did you, did you finish yours, or did you just bring one well, one I just beer? The one I only brought the one this time just because it was such a high alcohol content beer. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, you know, next time I'll line up a few, and that way we can try a couple. You know. Yep, and we're I don't know um we have no set schedule for this going forward. Um, we're looking at Fridays and Saturdays. Um, Doug's son has hoops. Yep. So um, and I do a lot of things. A lot of my beer events are on Saturdays. So some Saturdays we're gonna bump it back to Fridays. Um, some Fridays we'll bump it back to this, uh, Saturdays. Actually, I don't know. There's a big thing in Wisconsin called Wisconsin Wednesday a beer. So we might we might yeah. jump on on a Wednesday. So um, I'm not sure. Um, but I do want to say before I go, I do want to give a shout out to New Glarus Brewing for um, chocolate stout. It was very good. Um, if you like, um, I don't know. Um, another thing it reminded me of is like a tootsie roll at the end, actually. Huh. Um, kind of sweet little chocolate little love at the end it was good yeah. and then this is black bavarian from spreckers i said it right um it drinks <laughs> kind of like a spreckers there you go um <laughs> it kind of drinks like a hot it, it's a they call it a style lager but it definitely drinks like a black ipa where it's it's hoppy but not too hoppy and what did you have done well i had this nice polish beer comas that's the russian imperial stout I am definitely going to pick up another one or two of these and I'm going to sell them because I want to see how they go because I like selling stuff like this. Do you want some? Because I can get you some. For $4. For four bucks. <laughs> I'll get you a couple. And they're going to be sent to you somehow. $4, man. 
like for I mean, I mean come on for a, a big Russian some of yeah. those you pay you already know you're a Russian imperial drinker some of those are eight dollars on up yeah like even something like old Rasputin which is, is which is a mass produced one really is it, how much it, uh, I can get a four pack of that for fifteen bucks okay so but those are twelve ounce bottles this is a sixteen ounce ah okay 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 so if I got four of those that would be for 16 bucks but i'd be getting a whole other beer beer out of it but you know what man i i do have to get that's that's a very approachable price though for four old rasputins like people can't yeah. complain about price of craft beer i mean they can people are going to complain well, some of them are crazy. right people are going to complain regardless but like remember you know you I, again actually real quick i we can talk about this um i've been in the craft beer for six or seven years now so I remember a time where, again, Old Rasputin was only in a bomber and it was $20 or whatever, yep. um, or 15 Now, I mean, that is so approachable. 15 bucks for four beers. I can give two to my friends, keep one, sell her one. Yeah. So how long have you been in craft beer? And you say, yeah, do you remember what I was talking about? As far as far Yeah, I, I do. And I will tell you, I've been in craft beer a bit longer. I'm also a bit older. <laughs> And, and 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 a bit smarter if you're there before me. So well, cheers. Well, <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm not sure that's correct, but hey, we'll go uh, with it. Yeah. We'll so it's been thirteen or fourteen years for me that have been maybe longer. Uh, and I started like most people. My first foray into that was Dead Guy Ale from Rogue. Oh, Rogue. Yeah, that was my very first one, and that's one of the few pale ale style beers that I'll still drink now and then because there's kind of a nostalgia element to it because that was kind of my first one that got me into not drinking cheap shitty beer because that so was that, so that was your gateway to craft as I call it yes rogue dead ale wow rogue dead I, the dead. first time I had that was literally this year really literally yes <laughs> I know a lot of people who that was kind of their gateway that was like yeah I started with that so, because there's one so that, was it, that distributed all over, like over into the East Coast, and they're from Oregon. Was yeah, yeah. Was that around? Um, was that around before or after Fat Tire? Are we talking? Are we well uh, before? Well before Fat Tire. And and were you into that before Fat Tire? Or did you where it was well, Fat Tire yeah, around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was the first one, and then there was this restaurant when I lived in Scranton, <laughs> the office, which I hate. Regardless, we'll move on. I'm from Allentown, so yeah. Oh no, shit. See, I didn't know that, Greg. Well, we got, we got, uh, we can talk. Hey, you know what's in Allentown? You know what's near Allentown? Weyerbacher. Yes, and we're that's gonna. One of, that's one of my favorite breweries ever. So, I'm coming to Philly late. Um, the last week in April, want to meet? Yes. Fucking a right. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, we can't curse on YouTube. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, back to so back to um your so re, we're talking about um your your great way to craft that I had I mentioned on Fat Tire and mm -hmm. yeah Fat Tire was that was well I, I didn't hear about that until much later but there was a restaurant in Scranton called Cooper's who had a giant selection of beer that I'd never heard of ever because I'd never been into it and I went in there and that was like. Like, oh, <laughs> like, the the parted. Parted. like all the clouds parted and the right. sun came down <laughs> and, and that's, I never looked back. So. Cool. Cool. That's awesome, man. Um, Yeah, man. We, my old stump, I was born in Philly, raised in Allentown. So, um, yeah. And I, I haven't, um, I haven't been back to Philly to, for craft beer. I've been back to visit, but I haven't been back for craft beer. So I'm going the last week in april um saturday I'll be last week in april because i i do believe my my wife and i are going to new orleans in april as well but it's early so awesome um that's saturday I some report i'm gonna give some reports down there for craft beer as well oh excellent we'll talk about it here for sure yeah for sure and, um, um so that saturday i'll be in philly like philly proper down there and then the, the friday i'm gonna be in the suburbs and then the early next week i'll be coming up downtown i need to do wirebacher I need to do 
all that wonderful stuff that's going on up there. Weyerbacher, if you come just out of Philly, there's Victory. Their Victory. Victory. Victory has their uh, brew pub has a restaurant in it, and their food there is phenomenal. Well worth the stop. Uh, I'm gonna yes. And you got to get the gold monkey on tap because Jesus. It's my turn. It's my yeah. turn. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to coming back to see what the hell is going on in Philly. I hear nothing but good things from afar. Especially yeah. from, you know the whole area too. You know, so like. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I'm excited, man. I'm I, again, like I said, I haven't been back for beer, and it's just a beer trip. So this is that's one of my beer trips. Um, and I will tease. I'm going to Montana this year. Yeah. Dude, that's a place I'd really like to go. <laughs> yeah, I, it's uh, the Beer Bloggers Conference is there, and I'm going. Damn it. Awesome. So well, that's we'll awesome. talk about that too. Oh, we man, we're gonna have a good year in beer. I'm hope I'm I'm gonna try. I'm trying to get to the Great American Beer Festival. I missed it last year. That thing is amazing, awesome, fun. There's so many stories that come out of that. But um, yeah, Doug. So um, I don't know. Um, we will see you guys. Um, we're gonna wrap this up. Um, I had fun. It's my first time. I didn't finish my beer. So we'll, yeah, we'll finish I finished my 12 percenter. So, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah. On um, the next time we see you guys, we'll probably be a little bit more diverse. Um, one of us will have a maybe a mixed drink or cocktail or something. Um, <laughs> we'll definitely have you know, we're definitely going to work on having different beers um, yep. for sure, for sure. Um, and yeah, um, we're going to do this hopefully every week. Um, we're going to try for YouTube and Facebook. But um, thanks for whoever has come to talk to us. Um, I don't know who is. We haven't. I don't know, Doug. Were you on the page? I didn't get there. Yeah. All I was gonna say is, if anybody has any requests to for us to talk about stuff or beers to try, freaking let us know, man. We'll if we can grab it, we'll do it, and we'll be happy to talk about it and ask questions. Get in. This is an interactive thing. We want to invite as many people in as we can. You know, Greg and I will be talking. We'll also bring other people in down the road to talk about other, you know, different liquors or wines or whatever. We're going to, yes. not just gonna, one guy. Yeah. you know, beer is right for this first episode. It's going to be a recurrent theme, obviously, but we're going to go the spectrum of libations. And we'll see you guys soon. Next week, next week, Doug, we'll figure out next week, maybe okay. Friday, Saturday. Um, actually, next week we'll probably give a warning on channels. Yeah, Look for it. Look out for it. Yep. We'll see you guys yep. soon.